So, I have a thing for 18th century ceramic heaters. Have you ever walked through a palace or a manor house or anything like that in Northern Europe and stumble across a thing like this or this sitting in every corner, in every room, on every floor of said house? And you thought to yourself, hmm, what are those randomly shaped objects just standing in the corner? Is it a shower? Spoiler, no, they are not showers, although that is a question I have been asked multiple times during my long and illustrious museum career. Hello every hoopa and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing great. Uh, this might be my least viewed video ever because today we are going to talk about 18th century heating systems. Yay! <laughs> and I am very excited because I have a thing for 18th century heating systems. And today we are going to focus on the 18th century Nordic ceramic heater. How were they developed? How do they function? What was their connection to early industry? And how did one guy design them to be French, but quintessentially Nordic? But first, terminology. All of these words in different Nordic languages stem from the German word kachelovn, which in its turn comes from the Latin words kakabus, pot. And the kakelung, uh, which is the word that I use in daily speech, uh, because uh, yes, I do talk about them in daily speech. And directly translated into English would be tile oven. I know that some people use the term masonry heater, and I tend to use the term ceramic heater, because that's just how I've been trained. The practice of combining ceramics with fire as a heating system does not stem from the 18th century. It goes way back and it spans multiple cultures as well. An ancestor to the 18th century ceramic heater was the medieval pot ceramic heater. It's called a pot ceramic heater because it is constructed out of multiple pot-shaped objects that are fastened around the um, fireplace, thus creating heat. These were fairly affordable and they could be found way into the 1500s. The 1600s, it's heating up. <laughs> I'm actually ashamed. This type of ceramic heater starts popping up. It consists of a combined open fireplace, which gives you warmth and light, and a closed ceramic heater, which is connected to the open fireplace with a pipe. The heater is hollow, so you could put the embers from the fireplace within it, and it will increase the heat in the room. This is, of course, a real status object, and you want to combine it with a huge fire because being able to use a lot of firewood shows that you got money. And if you were able to have fires burning in multiple rooms at the same time, then you were really showing off your wealth. However, this system was more common in the European continent where you could find manufacturers like Delft, for example, and not so much in the Nordic countries, and especially not in Nordic like country houses well off in the rural countryside. You needed a nudge from a certain woman to get that trend started. May 7th, 1697, a fire ravaged the royal palace Tre Kronor, which means three crowns, in Stockholm, Sweden. The damage was massive and construction of the new palace would not be complete until over 50 years later in 1754. And 10 years prior, and 10 years prior to 1754, 1744, the same country, Sweden, had welcomed a new crown princess, Lovisa Ulrike of Prussia. She was a princess from present-day Germany and in that culture swear 
the ceramic heaters were more common than they were in her new country. Crown Princess Lovisa Ulrika insisted that ceramic heaters should be installed in the new palace. An architect, Karl Horleman, uh, who was responsible for the palace build at the time, was tasked to make sure that the princess had her way. Now, he was not completely on board with the idea because Karl Horleman had studied in France and he really favoured the French Rococo fashion uh, and French Rococo fashion, uh, where open fireplaces were more common and German closed ceramic heaters were not actually a given match. But what I'm trying to say here is that this Swedish architect wanted French open fireplaces because French fashion and the princess wanted closed ceramic heaters because that was more common in her native Russia. So, what he came up with was this. The shape and design of the heater is supposed to mimic the design of the French Rococo open fireplace with a little rocaille or seashell incorporated on top. The heater is divided into two pieces and separated by a small shelf or even a divider. He opted to incorporate painted decor and voila! Suddenly, you had a Nordic take on a German heating system with French-inspired design. And a few years later, the round version of this heater was developed. And since the royals were filling their new palace with them, there was a sudden interest from the aristocracy as well. About 20 years later, in the 1760s, it wasn't the palace that was burning anymore. It was the world. Or, well, humans doing damage to nature isn't really a new concept. In 18th century Sweden, the iron and copper industries were basically the two export products that had a large international demand. However, the smelting and processing of iron uh, is something that demands high energy and it demands a lot of firewood. It's a multi-step process and it's very energy consuming. Actually, the authorities at the time supervised how close the different iron production facilities were situated uh, to, next to each other so that they wouldn't risk of running out of the necessary fuel and this fuel would of course come from the rich forests in Scandinavia. But the thing is, at this time, new trees wouldn't really be planted, but old trees would just be cut down. Think about Saruman's industry in the two towers and you get the idea. By the way, there's a scene in the two towers extended cut where Saruman gives the order to the orcs that they have to run, run the iron furnaces night and day. And you're like, yeah, sir, that's how they are run. When you lit that thing up, it will not stop burning until like a few days later. It's a 24 hour job. Like no wonder the industrialization of Isengard is so slow if he tries to shut the thing off when, he's, when he feels done for the day. And these industries led to a shortage of wood, but also a huge deforestation problem. In 1767, uh, there were actually meetings focusing on this in the government of the same country, Sweden. Um, and they were so scared of losing this revenue from the metal production that the country had at the time. And in their fear, they turned to the cleverest man in all the land, or like they, they, called a, they contacted a friend of theirs, Count Kronstedt. And he, in his turn, counted his, contacted his friend, Baron Vrede. And together, they started experimenting with new ways to heat houses without wasting firewood. Because the idea here is not to save the environment and not to save the forest, but it is to make sure that households 
use lesser amounts of firewood for heating uh, so that the, the remaining forest can be used for industry. That's the whole point. In the same year, 1767, the two gentlemen published a booklet called Design of Ceramic Heaters for Saving Firewood. The groundbreaking design consists of constructing a heater with an internal system of smoke channels. When the fire is lit here, the channels forces the hot smoke to circulate around, which heats up the ceramics, which in their turn radiate and also retain the heat. The heater is attached to the chimney in the back and the flow of smoke can be regulated on top. And several hours later, you start a new fire. The heater should be used with closed shutters for maximum effect and should thereby be combined with candles at, as it will give the owner heat but no light. And this new heating system with rotating smoke greatly improved the effectiveness of these types of heaters and it also made life for wealthy people all, all around the Nordic countries much more comfortable because these were really expensive status objects and they always were intended to be just that. And they came in an array of different lovely colorful design uh, which could actually umph up the room and match the interior. And later, in order to keep up with the antiquity and Mediterranean trend that was so popular in the very last decades of the 18th century, they were actually developed into looking like this column shape. <laughs> and this specific one is from King Gustav III of Sweden's private pavilion at Haga Park. And you can really feel the Mediterranean vibe coming from this one, can't you? Yes, yes, we can. And another thing, when heating systems of this kind are discussed, um, then there are usually two names of manufacturers coming up. One is Marie Berry and the other one is Röstrand. Uh, and contrary to popular belief, there are very few um, surviving heaters today that can be confirmed to be either authentic Maria Berry or Röstrand. The majority of these ceramic heaters were probably constructed by independent constructors because ceramic heater builder was a profession just like cobbler or pot maker or tailor were back in the days. He would basically come to your house and set it up in a few days, just construct it there on the fly. The ceramic heaters went through radical transformations over the course of the 18th century. They went from hollow shells uh, to French inspired ovens to advanced heating systems fueled by the desire of saving natural resources for industry. However, when the 19th century rolled around, uh, the colorful designs be became increasingly outdated and they started to be replaced by pearly white designs instead. So many of the colorful 18th century status objects were dismantled and actually either sold or given to people from other social groups that suddenly could have this type of heater in their home. And it could continue to bring comfort and warmth to their new owner. However, nowadays, if you have one of those in your apartment or house today in the Nordic countries, that will increasingly pop up the value of the property because nowadays they are very sought after and especially these ones that are colorful uh, from the 18th century. So there you have it, the 18th century ceramic heater, an iconic piece of Nordic 18th century history. So um, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. It means a lot to me that you took the time out of your busy day to stop by my channel today. 
Um, and if you like the video, please consider leaving a thumbs up or subscribing to this channel or sharing the video. Otherwise, take care, please stay safe and I hope to see you soon again. Bye!